Hi guys, this is Double Your Dutch. This is lesson two of our little uh, Dutch language course collection here on YouTube. Be sure to check out lesson number one where I explain how to actually go about learning Dutch uh, before you check out this one. Uh, now in lesson two, we're actually going to talk about pronunciation. Let's get that out of the way before we uh, move on to other topics. Let's start with letter A. Uh, the letter A is pronounced ah in Dutch, like aha, right? Uh, but there's actually, that's what we call the long sound or the long vowel. But there's also a short vowel, a short sound of the letter A. So we can look at both of them here. When you just see the letter A, you say ah. If you see double A, you also say ah. If you see it at the end of a word with nothing uh, as the last letter, like in pa, you also say it like that. And uh, you can say it in uh, the same way in dagen. Okay? At the bottom, you see the short sounds. So it's pop, dag, pak, and pakken. All right, so it's pretty obvious with pop, dag, and pak. It's simply that the word does not end in the A, but it ends in a consonant. Right? Pretty obvious. But we should check out the difference between dagen, long sound, and pakken, short sound. Well, actually, that is explained if you split these words up into syllables. Da and then chen. The first syllable, da, is obviously ends with an A, therefore a long sound. In the case of pakken, because there's two consonants, it's pakken. So the first syllable ends with a K, so obviously short sound, right? There's a and o. Dagen, pakken. Okay? All right, let's move on to the next letter. That's letter D for dach. Now, letter D is pretty obviously simple, the same as in English. You pronounce uh, day or door or whatever. Um, but there is a slight difference between how you pronounce the D at the end of a word between uh, English and Dutch. So in the case of hadden, as we can see, it's as you might expect. Hadden, a short A sound, right? Dach, short A sound, and then hadden, you see the short A sound because it's double D, right? Hat and then den, if you split it up in syllables. Hat, the singular version. And then you have hart and hart. Now, here's where it differs from English. In English, you would say hard, hard, and heart, heart, right? This is hard. I can feel my heart beat, right? clear distinction between pronunciation in Dutch you don't have that hart and hart hard and hart are pronounced the same it's both hart you basically don't know whether it's a d or a t at the end you don't know just from uh, the pronunciation now this is actually something a spelling rule that even Dutch people often mess up there is a useful tool to use the best one to use is Use the phrase or two words, soft ketchup. Soft ketchup. Now, you know that if every word you have the infinitive and you get rid of the last two letters, usually E-N, and then you say, okay, what letter is there? If that letter, that consonant, is in the soft ketchup word, so if it's S-F-T-K-T-C-H, P, one of those, then you do T or TE at the end. If the consonant is not in the word soft ketchup, then it's D or DE at the end. You don't hear it in the case of T and D at the end. So you have to kind of apply this rule to know which one do you need to use. So example is pucken that we just saw. Pucken. So the short version will be puck, right? Now you say, okay, is puck in soft ketchup? Yes, it is. Okay, so it's T and T-E. Pakte is, uh, pakken, by the way, is to grab. Um, pakte is, I grabbed. And gepakt is, uh, have grabbed, right? Um, now if you compare that to a different word like balen, balen. The short version would be bal, so you look at the L. Is L in soft ketchup? No, it's not. Okay, so then it's balde and gebald. And balen means something like um, 
being disappointed, uh, being a little grumpy, um, and um, yeah, some if something sucks, then it's it's balen. Let's move on to letter E. E is pronounced as A, so the capital letter would be A, double E A. Hayton, right? We know why now. If you split it up in syllables, Hayton also has the long A sound, and hate uh, also because it's double E. Now, um, Hayton, by the way, is to be called. So in the lesson about introducing yourself, which we'll do later, uh, you will also find this word. Now, the short version you also have, which is het, helpen, help. Het is it or the, helpen or help is to help, right? So you have heten, helpen, right? Okay, there is a third pronunciation of the letter E, in fact, which you can could have noticed in heten, helpen, vette, or hele, which is if it's not stressed, when it's stressed, you either have the long or the short sound. When it's not stressed, like he dun, so the second un, helpen, vette, hele, you pronounce it as e, or un usually, yeah, and not the long or short sound. Okay, let's move on to the letter G. G is pronounced as he, ch, yeah, so examples are gaan, going, geen, uh, which means none, dag, day, and dagen. Yeah. All right. Uh, the other version of the same letter uh, is with ch, which is pronounced the same. Pech, lach, lachen, lach, and schat. Yeah. You need to practice it a little bit and get used to that guttural sound. Ch, gaan, geen, dag, dagen. In Dutch, it's actually uh, people talk about a hard and soft G around the in uh, the north and northwest. Um, in the west, in general, people tend to use the hard G, which is the ch, gaan, and in the south and also in Flanders, Belgium, they tend to use the soft G, which is more like gaan, geen, dag, dagen, dagen, dagen. Gaan, gaan. You hear the difference? Well, which one you you how you pronounce it? I mean, nobody cares. But just try to try to get some kind of guttural sound out, and whether it's soft or hard, uh, you know, doesn't really matter. Now, <clears throat> connected to the G, there's actually the CH and the SCH, which is ch or sch. So you can find them in words like pech, which is bad luck, lachen, which is laughing or to laugh. Um, lach and schat, schat, which means either treasure or something like babe, hey babe, baby, yeah, something like that. So, ch, the ch is pronounced the same, ch, and you put an s in front of it, it's just sch, sch, That's pretty obvious, right? Okay, moving on to letter i, letter i, capital letter i would be pronounced e, e. Right. Uh, if you see the I, just you're trying to spell it as a letter, or you see it in isolation, it's pronounced E. When it's I E, it's pronounced E as well. So this is actually the long version of the sound, and the long version E in a word is always spelled with I E, with two letters. So not like double A or double E. You don't have that with the I E. You have I E. You never have two I's after each other. You have I E, is E. So examples are fiets, fietsen, which is bike, bicycle, uh, cycling, zien, which is to see, and ding, which is number ten. So always long sound, I E, right? And then you also have um, the short sound, which is I E or ich. So ik, fit, hitte, zien, which means I, fit, heat, and sentence. And you also, when you use ich, it can be ich, but it's often then also pronounced uh, like ich, just like the e when it's not stressed. So if you say gierig, you don't say gierig, you say gierig, bezig, bezig, bezig. You could say it, but 
it would be a bit of an exaggeration. So again, when it's not stressed, you basically turn it into ugh, gierig, bezig. Okay. All right, then the J. J is not very complicated, but the only thing you need to take into consideration is that the J is not pronounced J. It's not J. It's like the Y at the beginning of a sentence, like Yankee. Yeah. So, ya, yeah, yan, yar. Or of course, yan in Yankee actually comes from the word yan, which is a popular Dutch name. Ya, yeah, yan, yar. Okay? Uh, pretty straightforward. So, don't say jan, don't say ja, don't say jar. People don't say it like that. Okay? Let's move on to the letter O. So, again, capital O would be the long sound O, O, boom. School, common, hope, and hopen. So common and hope, you see, if you do the whole syllable trick, divided into two syllables, ko and men. So of course you have the long sound. Short sound also exists, like in op, vol, kom, klomp, stop, and stoppen. It means on, full, to come, clog, and to stop. Right. Pretty straightforward. Um, then we go to the R. There's actually three R's you can hear in Dutch, actually. The rolling R, like the R, R, praat, raar, vragen, ver, bergen, beren. Yeah, like the Spanish R, maybe. You, you don't have. The English R, I don't know what else you might call it, but which would be the R, R, more like that. And that is actually not just people, who usually English speakers who learn Dutch will sound like that, but there's actually Dutch people who use the R like that natively. And it's supposed to be like, it's supposed to be like a posh upper class accent. You say R, so you say pra, well, you, you only really hear it at the end of a word, like the praat would be kind of normal, but a raar, raar, praat, praat, raar, vragen, fair, fair. Rar, rar, fer, fair. Yeah, you can tell the difference. But anyway, the, the more or less English R. And the further south you go, the more they, the R starts to sound a little French. So, prat, rar, vragen, ver, bergen, bergen. You know, it sounds very much rar. It, it sounds uh, kind of French ish. Well, it makes sense. If you go to the south, you will end up in France. So, yeah, you have basically three ways to say it, but standard would be the rolling R that would be most standard. Praat, raar, vragen, ver, bergen, beren. Yeah. Rolling R would be the most common. Okay, let's move on to the letter U, which means U. U. So, U, vuur, vuren, uur, and buren. Vuur is fire, by the way. Um, Buren is fires, Ur is our, and Buren is neighbors, by the way. But there's also a short version you can see in Hut, Snurken, Bukken, Barkruk. Hut is hut, Snurken is to snore, Bukken is to bend over, and Barkruk is to, is a uh, bar stool. Yeah. So again, the usual, like, uh, same principles, right? You can do this the, the syllable trick if you want to check it out and double U, which is like double O, double E, double A is always the long sound. Okay. Then there's a few combination um, vowels that you don't have in most other languages. Let's start with the A, or the long and soft A. So A, I, J, when you see I, J together, it's pronounced A. You see E, I together, so the opposite of I, E. You also say I, A. So it's pretty much pronounced the same, I and I. Um, it's just that the one is called the short I, and the other is called the long I. So short I you find in A, klein, train. Long one in hij, wij, pijn, and kijken. I is egg, by the way. Klein is small. Train is train. Hij is he. Wij is we. Pain is pain, and kijken is to look. Um, yeah, pretty straightforward. Just just pay attention that this is how you pronounce these letters. Then you have the EU, 
not the European Union, but the U, the U, and we say it, Euro, Europa, Leuk, Keuken, U, Euro, Europa, Leuk, Keuken. Try to practice with it. It's not really a sound foreigners are used to making, but um, yeah, give it a shot. Uh, then we have the U, uh, like in Uitspraak, Uit. Um, I'd track its pronunciation. Out is, uh, well, from, I guess. House is house. Thuis is at, ho at home. And verhuizen is to move houses. It's to move, not in general to move, but to move, like, from one address to the next. So, au, outspraak. Huis, thuis. Yeah? Something you probably need to practice with a bit. But it'll come to you, don't worry. Then we have the OU, which is au, goud, zout, fountain. Goud, gold, zout, salt, fountain is uh, mistakes. Or, yeah, so fout could be wrong or mistake, yeah. Now the AU, or au, which could include a, a W, uh, also exists uh, like in gau, which means soon, and blau, which means blue. Um, same pronunciation as OU, but uh, yeah, sometimes used separately. Um, then there's the OE, which is U. You're going to see that one probably the most. Um, uh, OE is always pronounced U, like in boom in English, but then goed, goede, boek, boeken. Notice also the U uh at the end, goede. Boeken, right? So, goed, goede, boek, boeken. All right. And then we have a variety with the I at the end, which is simply oei, oei. So, doei, sproei, foei. Doei means buy. Sproei is to spray. And foei, which means uh, something like uh, bad doggy or something like foei. Yeah. Um, we also have the double A with an I at the end, which is I, dry, dryen. Fry, buy, dry, uh, dry in is actually um, to turn. Fry is um, yeah, beautiful basically. Mm, buy is bay. We also do the same thing with o, oi, moi, koi, vloi. Moi is beautiful, the more, most common form of beautiful. Koi is cage, and vloi is flea. And then we have iu, iu like the Ew, that's disgusting. But it's actually a, a normal sound because new, which is a very common word, new means new. Uh, nieuwe and nieuwsgierig. It's a good one to practice with, nieuwsgierig. No? Okay, pretty straightforward. And then there's eeuw, eeuw. Kind of the same, but not quite. Eeuw, so eeuw is century. Schreeuw is to scream. And meeuw is seagull. Eu, schreeuw, meeuw. Then there's also u. U is actually um, the uh, your, a possessive pronoun, your, but the polite form. Ru is rough, and du is to shove or push. Right? That's basically all the things you might encounter. So if you're ever confused, you can always go back to this lesson and say, okay, how the hell are you to pronounce that again? All right, so now it's time to practice a little bit. So try to say negatief, negatief, or positief, positief. Negatief, repeat it. And then positief, okay. You can practice with voordelen, voordelen, which means advantages, and nadelen, which is disadvantages, nadelen. You can have messenhouder, messenhouder, which means um, something to put your knives in. Knife holder, I guess. Um, de nieuwe boekenplank, de nieuwe boekenplank, which means the new bookshelf. Right? Let's try it with a sentence to finish it off. Ik hou niet van zouten of zoete maaltijden. Jij wel? Ik 
hou niet van zoute of zoete maaltijden. Maaltijden. Jij wel? Oké, okay, then we can finish up with het einde. Het einde. Oké, okay, that's it. Uh, so I hope this was kind of useful. I kind of tried to explain all the main uh, pitfalls and issues you might deal with. We'll come back to uh, several issues in other videos. But uh, anyway, thanks for uh, sticking with me. Uh, don't forget to like and share. Subscribe to the channel. Comment, why not? And uh, tell me what uh, form of pronunciation you're struggling with the most. And of course, don't forget to check out my other lessons on this channel. And if you want free lessons in your inbox, go to doubleyourdutch.com. Sign up for the free lessons. And of course, there's also a course there for you to buy. Okay, well, thanks a lot for listening. Until next time, goodbye.